Joe here for Joyrider TV from the Wild Wind Boat Park, live for another question and answer extravaganza from the Wild Wind Boat Park, where now things are happening and we've got a full team. We've got a team down here on the beach today, led by Mr. White Slice himself. Hello. Yeah other notable play players that we've got on the team at the moment. From Ipswich, England, we've got Ash. How's it going? Representing the green on green. <laughs> Has a gr green on green with a touch of black. Yeah. That's it, it's, it's all right, it's new. It's high quality, they wash out. Yeah. A nice hunt today. We've got Will. Hello. We've got Sam, who is from... Chester. Chester. Hello. Yeah, that's Pirate Sam to you, by the way, uh, who apparently deserves a crew cookie for being so good at rolling up the mainsail. Right, I'm just going to go and find that shady spot. All right, also on the team, we've got from Germany, we've got Leia. Leia. Um, there are people everywhere in the boat park. And then from Espana, we've got Jacobo. Hi Dawson, hi Kush. Nice to have you on board as always just finding a spot where there is not so much sun um, as we proceed through the boat park. And I think over in the, hello, Jeff, mask free. <laughs> yeah, um, hello, hello to Cornwall, Wayfaring, Wanderer Western. Nice to have you on board. And I think this looks like a good spot to kick off over here. Um, this is in fact, oh hi, uh, it's Russell I believe, yeah what's up, yeah it's, uh, it is full steam ahead here at Wild Wind Sailing Holidays in Greece, um, we've been open since, we've been open for one week now as you're probably aware, but since the weekend we've had a reasonable amount of guests with us, I think we've had something like 25 people with us here um, which has been very nice and um, been having some champagne sailing conditions most days. It did, did actually rain on two days, but um, hi Joel, nice to have you on board. Um, yeah, so it's, it's been pretty good this afternoon. I think we've had something like, uh, and although it looks like there's no wind at all out there, that is actually just probably about 500 meters out where you can, can you see there's a sail there? Can we zoom in? We can, aha. Uh -huh. See, there's a sail there, that's a tiger, I think. No, it can't be a tiger, they're all here. That's a Pacific, um, probably something like 16 knots of wind. So very, very nice sailing conditions. And we've had some great conditions throughout the week. Um, I actually went out yesterday with one of our very regular guests, Gerhard, who's from Germany. We went on a tiger and uh, that video should be probably available to watch uh, later on today. It's probably gonna take an hour or two to upload on the Greek clockwork internet. Uh, so there we are. Oh, hello. All right, could you show Jib Traveler four hole plastic adjuster assembly? Yes. That is a great question to start off. So this question is being beamed from Turkey and uh, here we go. So we're gonna take a look at the Hobie 16 Traveller. Um, what is your favorite monohull? Well, at the moment it is the RS Zest, uh, but that's just because that's the most recent one that I've had a go on. But um, I'm gonna give that question some thought and come back to you on that. So here is the four hole. Um, this is the Trentec jib traveler car on the Hobie 16. So what we have is the jib sheet is ended there, runs forward to the block, comes back through and um, through the cleat uh, where it goes over to the other side. So that is the actual jib sheet part of it. And then the traveler part of it we have the traveler control line that goes from the car to oh, I can hardly see 
um, to the block in the casting there and then that goes to the cleat here and then from the other side that's just a piece of elastic that runs across but um, I can't remember who it was who suggested it but if you do want to sail with both jib travelers out at the same time you could put a separate piece of elastic from each side so then you've got that stretch that allows you to have it out on both sides so there you go ogle can hope that answered that question for you just there okay all right i'm just getting back out of the sun so i can actually see what the messages say on the screen all right this is my safe spot all right so just scrolling back what is your favorite monohull god that that question is haunting me now i think my favorite monohull is actually the foiling laser with the wedge do check out the foiling laser with the wedge movie that is really fun but um i haven't sailed that many different monohulls i've only really sailed what we've got here and there was a few other types that i sailed before i was working here at wild wind but with the wedge see that you are getting out there and sending it with some good conditions all right okay Dawson says are you following the Vendée Arctic race no I'm not actually um, I don't yeah uh, that would be a yacht race I should think and um, especially now that the season is underway I haven't really got much time for anything other than stuff here and the videos and that seems to be all I've got time for at the moment uh, not much else so there we go um, Jeff from gear report our new roving reporter I hope you've all been enjoying Jeff's reports on show us your cat can you hit the high level differences in the F18 and Hobie 16 um, do you mean can I describe what the main differences are if that's what you mean yes I can and here we go so the first main difference in the F18 let's flip this round so we can see one is the amount of volume in the hulls the F18 has got a significant amount of volume uh, so it's a, a much better boat for carrying a bit of weight um, I believe minimum weight for an F18 is 140 kilos whereas minimum weight for a Hobie 16 is 120 kilos that's for racing so the F carries weight a lot better than the Hobie 16 the next E difference is if we just let's ignore the dimensions of the boat because I think that's fairly obvious next main difference is that the F18 has got dagger boards that is where the dagger board would go um, the dagger boards make the boat a lot easier to tack and it makes the boat go upwind a lot more efficiently difference number two third difference is the f18 as standard has a spinnaker um, it's designed with a spinnaker in mind so that means the F18 has a relatively smaller jib so what the jib is doing on the F18 is just directing the flow of air around the back of the mainsail and not producing quite as much power as the jib does on the Hobie 16 what else are the features the F18 also has as standard these days a self tacking jib so that the crew can focus on other things such as on the downwind leg can focus on the spinnaker and then on the upwind leg we are we have got a much more adjustable downhaul system on the f18 so on the upwind leg we're playing the downhaul as well as the main sheet to keep that mainsail shape as perfect as possible for the wind that we have at that time um, and then the last main difference between the two is that the F-18 is a more fragile boat. But that is because the Hobie 16 
is possibly one of the most durable, indestructible boats out there, which is why on Show Us Your Cat, we are constantly seeing 16s that are like 40 years old, still being used, still out there. It's because the boats are so strong. There we go. I think that was quite a good answer, actually. Um, let me know if that was the answer that you were looking for, Jeff, if it wasn't. Uh, that was quite a long answer that you weren't asked him for. All right. Here's one from Russell. Uh, we recently started having problems. Bows digging in downwind prior to hull lifting wasn't a problem previously. Thoughts on a fix? It could be that the, the one that springs to mind immediately is perhaps you had water in the hulls. If you've got water in the hulls, if that water goes towards the front of the hull, that is going to bring the bows down. Um, also, bef bows going down before hmm, before lifting the hull. Maybe your mast was a bit more upright than normal. If, um, if you think of the weight of the rig on the 16, uh, the further the, or on any boat, in fact. So... Here we go, let's, let's visualize this with a, an actual boat. Here's an actual boat. In fact, I'll come around the other way so we're not looking into the sun. Okay, how are we, how are we looking here? All right, so if we look at the angle of the mast on the boat, we can see we haven't got the jib up, so the mast is further back than it would be if we were sailing. With the, the rig of the boat that far back, what that is doing is lifting the bows quite a lot. So that's putting quite a lot of weight over the back of the boat. So if the mast, there's the finger of the mast, is further forwards, that's gonna put more weight uh, relatively to the front of the boat, which could be bringing the, uh, the bows down a bit more. So that would be my guess number two on why you're digging the bows in a bit more than you were before. Um, also, another reason might be if your rudders have come out of uh, a good setup. So if they are perhaps stalling, a stalling rudder, if you're sailing fast and the rudder stalls, then that will force the bows down a fair bit as well. So it could be the rudders, or it could be maybe you're sailing with a new crew who's pulling the jib in too much. Too much jib is going to force the bows down. So those are my first ideas with why you might be digging the bows in there where you weren't before. Right, just I'm running for the shade again so that I can see the words on the screen. All right, so I'm just scrolling back here. Okay, okay, Frank in Canada just had some Joyrider clothing and it looks awesome. Those are custom designs. Um, yeah, I'm just about to launch a new, um, what I'm calling the totaljoyrider.com custom shop on the website where we're actually going to be able to produce designs with your sail colors on that design what that sounds exciting yeah so if you're into a bit of that then uh, i'll let you know all right let's see scrolling back yeah dawson saw the foiling laser a lot of fun stephen foiling laser not bad i agree okay nice problem to have being busy yeah it's uh oh we've got ollie smith who says hi live from wildwind yeah ollie's one of our instructors who is now on the team on the beach and doing a fine job i could tell you uh fine job okay so just scrolling back what is the minimum ideal wind for a 16 it's quite a big question that um i mm, depends what you want to get out of it you won't be 
let's say you're single-handed on a 16, the lowest wind that you can probably trapeze would be maybe eight knots. So let's say a force two would be the minimum wind if you're wanting to trapeze. If you just want to go out for a sail, the 16 is such a great design because it is fairly powerful. So if you're sailing single-handed especially, it will have a nice crispy feel where the boat does get up and go in a very light wind. If you're not trapezing, then, you know, as little as four or five knots of wind is enough to get going. Uh, depending on the sea state, if it's choppy, you do need more wind to be able to get going. But um, for me, minimum wind speed to really be able to start having a lovely time on a 16, I would say, is probably 16 knots. Um, and in that kind of wind, you can really start to give it some beans. So that is what I think. All right, scrolling back. Oh, thanks, Russell, glad that hit the spot. Uh, Joel says, is there a definition or chart to show and define points of sail? Close hold, close reach, beam reach, broad reach, newer sail and trying to learn all this terminology. Yeah, I think I did, I'm pretty sure I did a video called The Basics of Cat Sailing. Again, like usual, um, after the video is uploaded, I'll put some, uh, all of the linked videos in a list both on the Facebook page and on the YouTube page as well so that you can find all the videos which are relative relevant to the questions that are being asked but I did a video called the basics of catamaran sailing which does cover all of your points of sale so that will be very handy but if you're willing to take your um, sailing theory from any source all you need to do is Google points of sale and uh, if you go to like images on your Google search it'll come up with about a thousand different people who have uh, drawn a nice picture to illustrate those points of sale so the information is out there quite a lot I should think all right scrolling back thanks for your question though Joel nice to have some new say uh, new sailors here as well as people who are already established wow that's a hell of a name there wanna be wanna be sim racer can you do a 49er rigging video hmm yeah i think that is probably something we could do we have got a 49er she's not let's say our 49er is not new and crispy but the idea with our 49er is to give people the experience of sailing a 49er. Should we go and have a look at a 49er? Let's do that because that is something that we can do. So we are taking a walk over to the other side of the boat park where we keep the boats without the stabilizers. Um, it's quite a walk. I'm feeling that this, in fact, on the way might be the next one for um, the catamaran sailing in a monohole feature like continuing from the rs zest that is an rs fever and that's got a spinnaker on it that's a lot of fun um but this is a 49er just here this is an olympic class boat and um you can see she's got these racks on the side it's quite lightweight she's got a ridiculously powerful rig and um it's like um, what they used to say about the International 14 was it makes sailing in a Force 2 feel like it's a Force 5. Uh, so it's a very challenging boat to sail. Uh, I did have two of our guys, uh, Josh and Fraser, last year made a video of 49er sailing, uh, which was a lot of fun. But yeah, we can have a look at rigging now. I'll put it on the list. Thanks for your question there, wannabe sim racer. Hello, Steve. With your mast, I'll, I'll assume you're saying mast, not mask rotation, on the F-18 style boats, do you tie them to the shrouds and leave them? They're long enough. Hold on. With your mast rotation rope 
on the F-18 style boats. Do you turn and let them long enough to drop off? All or... oh, right, okay, I, I think I see what you're saying. Yes, yeah, so this would be an FX1 question, I should think, if we're gonna be quite specific. Yeah, the, um, the ropes for the mast rotation are long enough to release it rather than having to tie it on every time you go sailing. Uh, so this FX1 has been in use. So yeah, we've got the mast rotation line just here, comes out from under the trampoline, and then we just tied it off to the base of the shroud so you can get hold of it. Of course, there's many different ways that you could route that line. I think if I had my own boat, what I'd probably do is take the line from there back to the shroud and maybe just through that shackle there for the spinnaker block and then forwards, I'd put a hole in here and have it going up the beam on elastic. That would be very stylish. Um, maybe that is what I would do if I had time on my hands and my own FX1. Okay, so we're back in this spot, which seems to be the comfortable position. Okay. This is uh, Bogomil Lazaryev. Nice to have you on board there. Um, two questions, any tips on getting out of head to wind? on an FX1? Okay, that's a good question. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so if you're head to wind, same as on any boat really, same as on any catamaran, if you are stuck head to wind, right, I'm just gonna set this down for a minute. Lovely. Um, if you're stuck head to wind on any type of catamaran, first thing to do is make sure that the mainsail is loose. If the boat isn't moving forwards through the water, the effect of a tight mainsail is just gonna be um, bringing the boat up to head to wind. So to get away from head to wind, first step is make the main sheet loose, very loose. If um, you wanna get away from the wind quicker, you can let the traveler off as well. So the main sheet and the traveler are both loose that's going to get you away from head to wind even quicker. Next thing is just to try to identify if the boat is going backwards. If your boat is turned into the wind, then of course the wind might start blowing the boat backwards. If the boat is blow going backwards, you're going to need to put the rudders in the opposite direction to steer the boat out of head to wind. If you have the rudders in the other direction, then what will probably happen is you'll come out onto the other tack. So those would be the key points of getting out of head to wind. The other thing you can do if nothing is working is to actually initiate a tack by cranking the main sheet in as tight as it will go, let the rudders go across because they'll naturally do that and then just continue as if you were tacking, that will get you out of head to wind. Thank you very much, that was a great question and I hope that answer was... Oh, second question. Is a mast float necessary on the FX1? Another very good question. The whole topic of masthead floats really depends on your situation. We could say, yes, the masthead float is an extremely sensible thing to have on the top of your mast because it will stop your boat from inverting if you capsize, meaning that you're a lot less likely to get stuck under the boat in the event of a capsize. So the masthead float has a massively beneficial effect of making the boat massively safer in that respect. So you may you may ask, why don't we have masthead floats on every single boat? Because here at Wildwind, um, we only have the mast floats on the boats which are gonna be more likely to be used by beginner sailors and not used in the afternoon wind when it's really strong. Reason there why we're not putting the masthead float on is that if the boat 
cannot invert, the catamaran on its side goes very quickly in a strong wind. We have done a test to see if it is possible to catch up with a, it was a Hobie Pacific that we did the test with, with a masthead float. And we had one of our best swimmers on the team trying to chase the Pacific just in his speedos with a pair of goggles on, see if he could catch the Pacific on its side when it had a masthead float and no, he couldn't. So that means if you're out at sea and you capsize and you become separated from the boat, then um, it is more likely that you'll become separated from the boat and you can't get back to it. Then the other kind of slightly more fashionable reason for not having a masthead float, um, maybe fashionable is the wrong word, is that having that at the top of your mast is gonna slow the boat down a bit. So if you're going for the maximum possible speed, it is gonna slow you down. But the main consideration should be safety. Um, one reason why people have masthead floats in certain places is uh, if it's shallow water, they really don't want the top of the mast to go into the bottom. That's another good reason to have a masthead float. So there we go. Have to leave the decision um, with you. Yeah, it's true, Stephen. Um, having that amount of windage at the top of the mast is going to slow you down a bit. So there we go. All right, just going to scroll back. I think that was a very good question. That's the link of it, says Ernie. Hello, Ernie. Nice to have you on board. Okay, there's George. That mast looks sturdy, unlike the last one I snapped. Oh, that must be from when we were looking at the um, 49er, I would guess. So George was obviously a mast snapper there. Um, all right, yeah, no problem, Joel, it's a pleasure. No problem, Steve, it's a pleasure. Here we've got Robert. Oh, Robert is chatting with uh, Steve here. We could almost, I'll see if we can do it, but um, on one of the various pages, maybe on my website or perhaps, um, maybe you could do it on YouTube, on the community tab. We could set up some like small forums from the community for like, there's a lot of FX1 sailors who are, um, okay, cheers Dawson. Nice one, good to have you with us. We'll see you next time. Hi, Christian. Great to have you on board. Yeah, maybe we can have like a Hobie FX1 little discussion room where people can just go into that room and discuss ideas about the FX1s. I think we've got a lot of FX1 sailors who are... Oh, here we go. Robert has got... Going via the shroud beneath the tramp on elastic... Nice. I'm, I am Gabba99 from Italy. Good to have you on board. Okay, Backlash RC, the jib traveler on the Hobie 16, runs side to side on the forward tramp frame member. The jib traveler on the Hobie 18 runs fore and aft. Can you talk about this and why this is? Yeah, it's a... That is quite a, a juicy question, actually. Um, yeah, so what, um, sorry, I'll just uh, get your name again. Backlash RC is saying, all right, if, let's visualize this by looking at a boat. All right, just any boat will do. Let's choose this one. So we're talking jib travelers. On a Hobie 16, the jib traveler goes from side to side like this um whereas on a hobie 18 on the classic the jib uh we, we can't call it a jib traveler because it's not a jib traveler as such it is a jib position where the jib is pulling from goes forwards and backwards like this um the jib on the hobie 18 classic is enormous um that could be a consideration 
what happens when you move the jib car backwards is the same as on a Hobie 16 as where you move the jib clue position. Um, that's a video I've just uploaded, by the way, jib clue and tack positions on a 16. But um, by moving the jib car backwards, it opens up the leech of the jib, um, helping you to dump power and making the boat more efficient either as you rake the mast back or as um, either as you rake the mast back or as it gets windier, move the jib car backwards and that will open up the back edge of the jib. Um, now, the reason on the Hobie 18, it doesn't have a side to side jib traveler, I've just been thinking about this while I've been speaking, would be because the jib on the Hobie 18 comes a lot far further back than it does on the 16. So if we can visualize this, on a 16, the jib finishes just forwards of the mast, which means we can use the beam to change our sheeting position. This boat is of course a Tiger and quite different. Um, whereas on an 18, the clue of the jib comes back to about here, where we don't have any option for any sort of sideways uh, jib sheeting position, which would be why there is that difference. I hope that is a good enough answer. That's the one that comes to mind um, immediately there. And I thought it was pretty good actually. So I'm happy with that as an answer. If I turn around this way, then you can see the sea, that's nice. Okay. Right, thanks very much for your question there, Backlash. Um, I'll have to check out your channel to see, are you into radio controlled stuff? Is that the RC stuff? Good stuff. Okay. Ah ha Jeff from Gear Report is going to film an FX1. I didn't know there was many FX1s in the US, but obviously there are. Um, yeah, look forward to seeing that for Show Us Your Cat next week. Hello, Mark. What is your opinion on modifications to the batten to keep the jib from fouling? We're obviously speaking Hobie 16 there. Um, yeah, I think whatever you can do with what you've got to stop it from catching on the mast and the halyards on the mast. Um, with the newer Hobie 16s from Hobie Cat Europe, I don't know what they're doing in the States, but from Hobie Cat Europe, the jib no longer has a cap on the outside. It has Velcro. Should we, should we have a look at one? We'll have a look at one. Here we go. We're going in the box. All right. Just, uh, I'll just set you down there. Okay, and we're back on. Sorry about that. We just dropped out of uh, reception there for a minute. Yeah, so the jib batten on the 16, on the newer ones, um, it's got Velcro on the inside. This string here is for releasing the Velcro if we want to take the batten out, which means on the leech of the jib, there's nothing sticking out, which means you're less likely to catch the batten on the mast. I would say that is a very worthwhile uh, modification to do with your jib. What you'd have to do is take it to a sail maker who would have to open up the batten pocket at the end there, put some Velcro on the inside, and then there's a tab that comes out with Velcro on it, which fastens it in. Okay, um, hopefully that black screen has um, changed back to this uh, explanation there Jeff um, all right I'm going back into the shade because really can't see very much when I'm out there in the field uh, okay can oh Alright. Okay, could somebody just give me a uh, 
give me a message if um, if we are back on and you can see uh, what I'm seeing right now. Um, if you could let me know. Still black. Still black. All right. Still black. What about if I flip it round? Still black? Or can you see me? Okay, if someone could let me know. If, uh, if this isn't working, we're gonna have to cease this. Or can you still hear me? That, um, then we can still chat. I'll just go through. If, um, Okay, I'm just gonna crack on. Uh, hello, Angus. Hopefully we'll be getting you out here soon. Angus is uh, one of our new instructors who's meant to be joining us fairly soon. Um, Jimmy Dodger, one, to one versus one races. Yeah, I'm absolutely mad for doing some more of that. That was really fun. Um, yeah, as we've only just started the season, so as we get more into the swing of things, we'll have more opportunities to do those, to do those sort of things, especially once we get more staff out and we're not feeling quite as stretched. Okay. Um, and then we've got, how do you pronounce that? Pepin. Uh, it's really nice you upload. A lot of the lost time. Could you do a video about the RS fever? Yes, coming up. Uh, RS fever video. I might even... If I've got time, I might even head out on that bad boy tomorrow. Um, can you show us a cat having a dagger board uphaul system? Okay, I can't show you that right now, but um, I will get on to the dagger board uphaul system video. I'm assuming that I'm back and you can see things. Um, I think maybe it was when I lost the um, the Wi-Fi signal. I had to switch to 4G that something happened. Um, yeah, it's a lot of black screen chat. A lot of black screen chat. Uh, still black, black, still black, black. Can we see the Velcro jobber? When we can see again. Still here. We can hear you. Cannot see you. Like a... Radio station, voice only, no picture still. Okay, um, all right. I think I'm going to um, conclude the transmission there, seeing as it's not working. So thanks very much for tuning in, everybody. Uh, sorry about the technological uh, failure there. But um, there we are. Sometimes the technology lets you down and I really cannot understand why that is but um there'll be this video with the tiger from yesterday uh later on today if you didn't see it check out the hobie 16 jib tack and clue position video that um kind of theory can be applied of course to other types of boat and uh i'll keep you posted on everything that's happening on joyrider tv uh thanks very much for tuning in and once again apologies for the lack of picture. Cheerio. We'll ca uh, okay, thanks, Mark. Thanks, everybody else.